Can you power rank all the cities you've lived in? It's a good question. So number one on my list, by far and away, is the city I'm living in as we speak, the speak, city I'm speaking from as we speak, Los Angeles, California. I had lived here for three years soon after college, and when I left to become the lead columnist for the Dallas Morning News, I said, if I ever get the chance to go back to LA, I am going and here I am. My wife, Ernestine, born and raised in New York, seems to come in on a daily basis in the afternoon from being outside, and she says to me, man, it's a beautiful day. And I say, duh, another day in paradise. It's warm days, it's cool nights, it's that Hollywood energy and creativity and vitality. It's celebrities to your left and your right. It's the mountains, it's the beaches. Give me La La Land. Number two on my list is San Francisco. I did live there for three years. San Francisco proper, just the city of, is my favorite place in this country, heck in the world, to visit. And yet, man, the weather there rivals LA. If you live down the peninsula or across the bay into the East Bay, it's right there with LA's weather. The, the scenery, as you probably know, is just absolutely breathtaking. The Golden Gate Bridge, the cable cars, Napa, I could go on and on and on. I, I don't need to sing the praises of San Francisco or the Bay Area because they speak for themselves. I lived there for three years and I could live there again. Number three on my list is Miami. Yep, you bet, it gets sweaty hot and humid. You do have to deal with the cockroaches. But listen, that Miami vibe, that South Beach electricity, I miss it. I could live in Miami again. I'm gonna wedge in here at number four, Dallas, Texas. Lived there a good number of years, I think about 17 years. I like Dallas, but I can't say I loved it. I grew up in Oklahoma City, which considered itself a smaller Dallas, but I had some great relationships in Dallas. I had some great times in Dallas. And yet, it's a good place to live, but you wouldn't want to visit there. There's no real, real action in Dallas. And in the end, Dallas was hard for me and hard on me. The weather's good, not great. I haven't been back much since I left which is really all you need to know. Now that brings me to number five on my list, which is New York City. It's a great place to visit, but my point of view, you wouldn't want to live there. I did for 10 years. Ernestine, who grew up there, made it tolerable for me. We had some great times there, but it was more having times with her than with it. Broadway plays are great great delis, great bagels, great pizza, great walking town, lousy weather. And I gotta tell you, living there just wore me out. Number seven on my list is my hometown of Oklahoma City. I did grow up there. My closest friends live there. I survived my childhood there. I got out of there somehow, some thank you God way. And I can't wait to go back there every summer. Can't wait. 
Oklahoma City, underrated golf mecca. Number seven on my list, if I'm counting correctly, is a tie between Nashville, Tennessee, where I went to Vanderbilt, and Bristol, Connecticut, to which I commuted for the 10 years, really 12 years that I lived in New York. Nashville, Tennessee, the truth be told, when I was at Vanderbilt, I barely saw Nashville. I, I didn't go to the Grand Ole Opry. I didn't go to Printer's Alley. I did nothing but study and work to survive at Vanderbilt as a public school kid thrown in with all those private school whizzes. When I think back of my time in Nashville in college, I think of pulling all-nighters and sweating midterms and finals and writing on deadline for the school newspaper. That's all I can really think of. I did go back fairly recently to visit, to be enshrined, as it were, in the Media Hall of Fame. And I'm pretty sure Nashville today is about 10 times the city it was in the days that I was there, which brings me to Bristol, Connecticut. It's a great place to raise a family. Great place, Southington, West Hartford, great places, pretty good golf courses. But all I did was work. I lived for 10 years, kept the same room, 365 days and nights a year at the Residence Inn. It's actually in Southington, but it's on the border of Bristol, Connecticut. There's only one restaurant to go to on that beaten path. Only one restaurant called Kava, I miss Kava. But all I did was work. And I love my work. And Ernestine actually loved coming to visit on some weekends, me up in Bristol, Connecticut. We just hung out at the Residence Inn. I had direct TV, we watched cable. And that brings me to the last city on my list, Chicago, Illinois. It is the single best sports town in America, but I definitely wouldn't want to live there. I'm not anxious to visit there. I did live there for three years, lived downtown at State in Huron. As you know, covering the 98 Bulls, highlight of my career, getting to know Michael Jordan, highlight, covering Sammy Sosa versus Mark McGuire in the great home run race, summer of 98 was top five, highlight of my career but it just gets too cold and windy in Chicago and the summer lasts, uh, what, maybe a couple of weeks in Chicago? And the traffic is the worst in the country in Chicago. If you grew up in Chicago, it, it's virtually impossible to ever leave permanently Chicago. Everybody wants to go back who's from there. But if you didn't grow up in Chicago, it is not hard at all to leave Chicago and I did. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.